Exotic plants have always delighted people to the point that they had a hard time parting with them. Ultimately, they had an idea. Now, if you pay a visit to any greenhouse, you will be able to discover the farthest and most unique places on the planet. By paying a visit to the Mykola Hryshko National Botanical Garden in Kyiv, you will discover the secrets of adaptation of different varieties of exotic plants from all over the world and their unusual form of existence. People have wanted to grow exotic plants since ancient times. Back in the time of Christopher Columbus, when exotic plants were being brought to temperate zones, people tried to create conditions that were a natural habitat for them. People have gained extensive and valuable experience since those times. You can see the rarest inhabitants of our planet at the Mykola Hryshko Botanical Garden. The first attempts to create a greenhouse complex were made in the pre-war times in the past century. However, they only started actively expanding the collection in the 1970s. There was the academician Vernatsky research ship in the 1970s, which went on expeditions to different countries. Our employees had sailed to Australia, New Zealand, the Malay Archipelago and Mauritius. They brought to Ukraine very interesting seeds and plants from these regions. Thus, today around 5,000 plant species from all over the world are taking root, developing and flourishing across 4,000 square meters. Thanks to this botanical garden, you can travel around the world without leaving Kiev. You can suddenly end up in a tropical forest of Southeast Asia, experience the atmosphere of the tropics of Central South America, and take a peek at the African and Australian continents. In addition to that, seeing these spectacular plants does not rule out the chance of feeling different climates of the world. Conditions that are close to nature have been created in the greenhouse jungle, especially for guests from different countries. The minimum temperature here is about 15 degrees without heating and humidity is maintained by constant watering of plants, paths and soil. On hot days, when the temperature rises up to about 40 degrees Celsius, the moisture evaporates and the level of humidity can reach 90 percent and higher. Even though it's still a chilly early spring outside, the eternal warm and humid summer reigns here. The feeling of a tropical forest can really be felt among the plentiful palm trees of 40 species. In addition to the familiar date and coconut palms, there are also unusual species that have little in common with their traditional representatives. And although cariota palm trees don't bear edible fruits, the juice in their flowering shoots turned out to be no less valuable and nutritional. We have an interesting cariota palm tree in our collection. Its leaves resemble fish fins. People call it a fish tail. It blooms once in a lifetime. Right now it is blooming and you can see the inflorescences and fruits of this palm tree. During this period locals make incisions on the flowering shoots and gather the palm sap just like we gather birch sap. Then they ferment it and this produces palm wine. Cariota palm trees make for the most delicious palm wine. This palm tree blooms once in its lifetime over the course of nine years, replenishing wine cellars with its juice all year round. Next to the Cariota palm tree from Southeast Asia, there is a native to the Caribbean islands. In this greenhouse jungle, it has grown 36 meters in height, almost reaching up to the ceiling. This Orstonia palm tree, or royal palm tree, is one of the most spectacular ones. It grows up to 45 meters tall in natural conditions, and it is depicted on the coat of arms of Cuba. 
ее изображение на гербе Кубы. У нас она уже достигла высоты. Такие вот для того, чтобы удержаться в вертикальном положении. The diversity of figs in the rainforest is equal to that of palm trees. A lot of people grow figs at home. There are rubber figs and whipping figs, but our figs are unusual. This fiddle leaf fig grows up to 80 meters high in natural conditions. The fig growing under it is a miniature vine. One family of figs includes all kinds of life forms, from large trees to such miniature vines. Another no less amazing fig life form is banyan. Adapting to the difficult living conditions in the tropics, this fig has shown considerable resourcefulness, releasing aerial shoots from its trunk and branches. When they reach the land, they take root and provide the plant with water and nutrients. Over time, the roots thicken and become trunks that support a single dense ground. Our collection contains a huge number of some great fig specimens. Figs are often mentioned as plants that can walk. One shoot becomes a root, and then another shoot becomes a root. In this way, one plant spreads over a large territory. This natural phenomenon is called banyan. The largest banyan tree grows in India. The plant occupies an area of over 500 square meters. You might get the strange impression that you are walking among tree trunks in the forest, while there are actually roots of a single plant. You can surround yourself with a blooming cloud even in January by visiting the azalea and camellia greenhouse. This was the first collection that was opened to the public. It was symbolic because 20 azalea varieties were brought here from Germany in 1946. Then our selection experts bred over 30 varieties of this plant. By crossing the rhododendrons, selection experts sought to get a beautiful flower with a subtle scent to avoid causing allergic reactions. So now, when people come to this paradise of azaleas, they enjoy the colors, grace and elegance of their flowers. White, pinkish, purple, mauve and sometimes quilled flowers retain their decorative effect for up to two weeks. One 20- to 30-year-old plant can have up to 500 plants blooming at the same time. It's hard to imagine that in a month and a half or two the plant will turn into an inspicuous dry shrub, just like its name suggests. Indeed, the interesting fact is that in translation from the Greek language azalea means dry. Almost all German varieties have been preserved. The plant of Professor Walter variety brought here in 1946 died two years ago. The plant was about a hundred years old, but we still managed to preserve its offspring and grandchildren. Here's another flower in Asian beauty. The Japanese camellia was especially valued by Europeans as a piece of jewelry. At the beginning of the 19th century, ladies wore dresses and had their hairstyles decorated with camellia flowers at balls. These long-lasting, elegant and sophisticated plants caused a true sensation in Europe back then. Dumas in The Dame with Camellias and Verdi in Traviata glorified the magic and mystery of the camellia. In Asia, this flower is treated as a deity. They plant them near temples, but never adorn themselves with them. We got camellia from the Batumi Botanical Garden back in 1970. We have about 40 varieties and hybrids in our collection. Camellia needs to be grown roughly the same as azalea. The biological fact is that it is a subtropical plant that lacks cool air, high humidity and a somewhat sour soil. 
In this greenhouse, visitors find themselves in the realms of amazing and mysterious colors. Orchids are cosmopolitan plants that have managed to adapt to completely different habitats around the globe. They don't grow only in the desert and the polar regions. Orchids grow in our climatic zone as well, although they are considered rare and are listed in the Red Book of Extinction. Our employees have been gathering an orchid collection for many years. There are over 25,000 orchid varieties, and our collection consists of more than 600 varietal hybrids. I must admit that it's a very large and impressive collection. So what is the secret of adaptability of such delicate and fragile beings? As it turns out, they're deceitful. Their beauty is deceptive for those who pollinate orchids. They attract pollinators with their unique refined flower shapes, sometimes not even rewarding them with nectar. Some lure bees in with their fragrance by only mimicking the presence of nectar, while others, on the contrary, spread unpleasant odors, attracting black flies, and some of these flowers even disguise themselves as insects, unfolding their petals in strange and curious ways. That is all due to the fact that no other family has such a large number of pollinators. Most plants are pollinated by insects, but orchids can be pollinated by hummingbirds, bats, snakes and even toads. There are Australian orchids that grow underground and are pollinated by underground insects. Phalaenopsis, an orchid that has long become a houseplant, was nicknamed butterfly because it is naturally pollinated by the eponymous winged beauties. This least demanding of orchids was able to adapt to life in apartments and offices. Phalaenopsis blooms all year round, even at low humidity. Orchids are not afraid of extreme conditions. In this case, the flowers store moisture and nutrients in a special tank, Tuberidia, or pseudobulb. However, in the usual habitat of tropical rainforests, orchids also adapt to living on trees, like epiphytes. Unlike the parasites, orchids don't harm trees, only using them for support. They have found support in the greenhouse and live in the usual rhythm of life. It is currently their flowering period, just like boat orchids. These are the first orchids we got in the early 1990s as individual flowers in gift boxes. In Asia, it is believed that gifting boat orchids means showing the greatest respect to a person. It is a unique flower. You shouldn't present a boat orchid to your girlfriend on the March 8 holiday, but presenting this flower to the wives of your bosses will certainly be a very pleasant gift. Thus, people also became victims of the deceptive beauty of orchids. We give them when we want to state our romantic intentions or demonstrate the utmost respect. Prickly exotic plants also have their passionate fans. They have a separate presentation platform here where arid plants are represented. Vegetation is very diverse even in such extreme weather conditions. Here alone, there are 50 cacti and 70 succulent varieties that grow in Central and South America and Africa. These are plants of different shapes and sizes, spherical, oblong, covered with sharp spikes or soft pubescence. Since these plants grow in fairly harsh conditions, they need to conserve their moisture. Therefore, there are no actual leaves and cacti. The plant focuses everything on preserving as much moisture as possible. This is evidenced by their shape and pubescence. Since it is very hot in the desert during the day and cold at night, the pubescence protects these plants from scorching rays of sun during the day and keeps them warm during the night. Especially thirsting specimens drink everything to the last drop by taking a special shape. Moisture goes right to the roots through deep burrows. Most cacti prefer to blossom at night, when heat goes away and their pollinators wake up. Agave stands out among the succulents with its large thick leaves and high peduncle. Originally from Mexico, it was widely used by the indigenous people. 
Agave. Agave is a symbol of Mexico. Indians were the first to start using agave. Agave leaf ends with a very sharp spike. By carefully tearing it off, you can pull out the central vein, which makes for a needle and thread. They even patched moccasins this way. The needle was so sharp and strong that it could even pierce leather. Like most inhabitants of the greenhouse, agave blooms once in a lifetime, shooting out a huge flower stalk that is sometimes up to 20 meters long. In half a year, it withers and dies, leaving seeds behind. Representatives of African vegetation in the island of Madagascar, Alawadia and Didieri are characterized by the ornateness of their stems and an extremely prickly character. And last but not least, Pachypodium is no exception. Even though transforms closer to the night, becoming covered with luscious pink and white flowers, they bloom when their pollinators come out, namely bats. This is another reason that will convince one to appreciate how wise and inventive nature truly is. Who knows what other secrets it is hiding? So travel together with us and explore the beauty of the undiscovered Ukraine.